Hello and welcome, near and far. My name is Heiko Wurtz, and the topic for our meditation this morning <clears throat> will be, our thoughts will be devoted on the subject of um, overcoming fears. Today, <clears throat> as our for our topic, overcoming fear. I want everyone to briefly close their eyes, go within, take some deep breaths. And feel within yourselves that notion of fear and how and where does it reside within you? How has it played a part in our lives? in our individual lives. For today, when we go within our meditation time, I want to have each of us have a dialogue with that entity, that feeling within us that we call fear. Because we're sitting here today to be able to have a way to associate with it, to cleanse ourselves from its destructiveness, to be able to move forward in our lives with our mind and our hearts as a more clear way to perceive our world and our destiny of our lives. It is fitting that this topic should arise <clears throat> for in this month Sunburst celebrates the virtue of courage and fear, the antidote to fear within us is courage and faith to be able to free ourselves from those things that cause us to freeze, to, to seize up inside. I wanted to bring forth a quote here that Yogananda had spoken about fear. It comes from Man's Eternal Quest. He says, <clears throat> Anxieties are awakened in the heart through the consciousness of pain. Hence, fear is dependent on some prior experience. So he alludes to this notion that our fears that are coming up in our heart center, our anxieties in our heart center derive from this experience of a pain that we may have had from a prior experience. When I looked up the basic definition 
of fear. It was, fear arises with the threat of harm, either physical, emotional, or psychological, real or imagined. But it doesn't really say what it feels like or what, how it interacts with us inside. When I pondered on this question of what is fear useful in us, it came up with this feeling that fear is one of our driving forces that propels us in our lives. But it has a negative connotation. And um, a healthy understanding of fear, I think, moves us to respect our physical condition that our bodies can get hurt and that we, we, we stop and we observe whether or not something that happens in our moment, we should judge as having some caution for it. Because, you know, we are all experiencing and living in this condition of mortality. But they say in um, self-help literature that fear can be a motivator. And so that in true, in turn, And that it does motivate us to do most of our actions in our lives. We act because we try to avoid negative consequences. But the other thing that in self-help literature it talks about is that there is an opposite motivator in our lives. And when we sit down in our, in our connection with, from within, where does our fear <clears throat> manifest itself? it's also in the same place where love can manifest in ourselves, in our heart center. And what happens when we have too much fear, when, when our experiences here in this world have too much of that energy it can lead our physical bodies <clears throat> to weaken our immune system. It can cause damage to our cardiovascular system. It can have gastrointestinal problems, ulcers, a whole range of things in our physical in our physical bodies. But on an emotional level and on a psychological level, fear has been known to ultimately have a paralyzing effect on us. So on one side, fear is a motivator and a driver in our lives. We can do better. We can learn things. It brings us into our mind's awareness. 
what we have to work on, where are our hidden weaknesses that we show ourselves and to others. It is a teacher. It is there to lay, to lay <clears throat> some guides, some guardrails in our lives. But when it becomes <clears throat> too far, too strong, it has this paralyzing effect. Some of the bigger questions in our lives, like the big what ifs, what if I die? What if I don't understand the future? What if I have failure in what I'm trying to achieve? These are all things that can have a strong paralyzing effect on our consciousness. And we must understand that fear is part of our human condition. And it starts, it derives from, I believe, our reptilian mind, the part of us that is in a way the most physical in our form the part that's always trying to keep us alive. And it always tests and analyzes all of our deeds and all of our thoughts. And it tests whether or not it's a, it should subjugate it with fear. And then it the process moves to the next step where one can feel these anxieties like little bubbles coming out in the heart center. So how do we inwardly release ourselves, our hearts, from this process. Our courage and our faith must come to the forefront, to our aid, when we feel those anxieties in our hearts. When we are able to pass transmute that energy within our heart center. It is from those places within ourselves and they're housed in the lower chakras, in the house of strength. Our solar plexus and our root and when we can feel that strength in us rise up into our heart center, we feel this anxiety being pushed away. Because in the heart center, the place of decision and change and transformation, we come to that place where we can dissolve our fears with the flow of energy. And we begin to start having connection within us to our worries. Because truly our fears are derived from this lack of connection that we have, this desire to have connection, to bring our love, 
connecting to the love of the whole universe. And in this movement of reconnecting through courage and through faith, We push out the doubt and we reseat ourselves inwardly in this strong place where we really truly are again in our here and now. So as we move into our meditation time, And we find our place and we breathe in and we slow our breath. I would like everybody to place their consciousness into this heart center of ours to bring the courage and our strength from below and to flow our energies and wash our hearts and bring our energies up to the point of our seat of, of concentration and expel our anxieties and our worries up into the light. Let our breath slow. And our consciousness flow. All of our energies, our courage and our strength through our inner channel up into the center of all places, the center of our consciousness. We are not fear. We are not gripped by fear. This life is a journey and it's a gift. And we move with love for others, for gratitude, for this life. We move with love in healing and in the spaces between our thoughts. We are spiritual athletes. We are here to heal, free from fear, facing our doubts with courage.
It is okay to be vulnerable to the divine, to unfold and to lay out that which we are, which includes all of our fears and all of our anxieties. It is important to inwardly map out where these fears manifest and reside and with courage we bring our love and to observe and to understand each one because they're all part of our experience and we are here in our bodies to learn from our experience. We've all made that commitment to ourselves and those deeper questions that fear can bring to a true paralyzing state within us. Those questions we can offer up into the divine spirit. And we can ask them and we may yet receive that answer coming down and into our hearts and releasing all of our anxieties and our worries. Every moment is always weighed deep within. Do we respond in love and kindness or in fear? We cannot move fear and frustration within us. It can only be touched through love and dissolved in love through movement of our consciousness, our vibration of divine energy, divine spirit, deep consciousness within us. We reside in all places in this moment. We are aware of all of our anxieties and we lay bare and in vulnerable state to you we offer our love and our worries, and we humbly ask that you give us the courage and the peace that comes forth from you in abundance. May our hearts be that point of inner transformation and love. Amen. Just have one more closing thought to share. <laughs> this comes from uh, Tony Robbins, who is a uh, self-help guru. Um, and his quote <laughs> that I have here is, life doesn't happen to you. Life happens for you. And um, I really had to take pause and um, reflect on that one <laughs> because um, when life happens for you, that means that it's given in love. Oh
me walk with you, talk with you, be with you, show you the love that I've always held for you. Lord, let me walk with you, talk with you, be with you, show you the love that I've always held for you. Lord, let me walk with you, talk with you, be with you, show you the love that I've always held for you. Lord, let me walk with you, talk with you, be with you, show you the love that I've always held for you. Lord, let me walk with you, talk with you, be with you, show you the love that I've always held for you. Lord, let me walk with you, talk with you, be with you, show you the love that I've always held for you. Lord, let me walk with you. Yeah.